Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, Harnessing the Power of Data Intelligence, Transforming Data into Business Value, sponsored today by IBM. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we'll be collecting them by the Q&A panel. And if you would like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, Zoom defaults the chat to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely change that to network with everyone. To find the Q&A or the chat panels, you can find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen for those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Daryl Haswell. Daryl is a Director of Product Management for Data and AI at IBM with over 15 years of experience in the field of data management and analytics. As a senior data architect, Daryl has played a pivotal role in designing and implementing advanced data solutions that empower organizations to turn raw data into actionable insights. His expertise spans across data integration, quality assurance, governance, and advanced analytics, making him a sought after thought leader in the industry. I also got the pleasure of interviewing Daryl and hearing his story of how he got into data for the Dataversity Talks podcast, My Career in Data. I encourage you all to check that out. And with that, let me give the floor to Daryl to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for uh, welcoming me here. Are you able to see my screen okay? Yeah, looks good. Okay, let's just jump into it. Uh, thank you for that intro. You, you make me sound so fancy. I appreciate it. So um, <clears throat> thanks guys for having me. Happy Halloween to everyone here. Um, I hope you have a, a safe night if you're going out. So today I am going to cover the data intelligence market and talk to you about some of the ways that IBM brings value in this space to transform uh, data into good business outcomes. Um, I wanna be very clear that when I refer to data intelligence, um, I mean the ability to prepare data in a smart and automated way to ensure it's optimally, uh, optimally structured for achieving business outcomes in data AI, right? So in a nutshell, how do I prepare my data uh, so it's uh, prepared for good outcomes in a very automated and um, very um, secure way, right? So jumping into it, um, before we get too far into it, I always like to pull up some type of quote, right? So I have one here from Stuart Bond, IDC. Um, it reads, the foundation of enterprise intelligence is data intelligence. Intelligence about data supports and informs every data-driven decision, learning analytics, and actionable outcome. I thought this quote was relevant because it speaks to the importance of data intelligence. It reminds us that the market is, is still thinking about this, right? Um, housekeeping, um, our agenda. I, I'm not gonna take the full hour or, or whatever we have. Uh, I'm gonna keep the back end open for questions in chat. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on the surface because there's so many inroads that we can, but I've divided this up into three sections. One is I'm gonna talk through the problem statements, the doom and gloom, if you would. Two, I'm gonna um, talk about the solutions that IBM can bring to solve this. Uh, and three, and lastly, I'll, I'll walk through some of the value statements and who does, who does this benefit from a persona perspective, right? So again, I, um, I hope you find this useful um, and I hope you ask questions. I'm gonna, again, not go too deep until we, we have to go deep, right? <clears throat> so moving forward. All right, I also like to always start off with some type of stat, right? We all know Gen AI is a big deal and preparing your data for AI outcomes is, is not easy, super hard. Um, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it and we wouldn't have these webinars that we're having now. With that being said, about 80% of all enterprises will incorporate generative AI into their business processes by 2026. That's just, that's staggering. That means folks are working on it now and vigorously. And, um, and that speaks directly 
to today's digital world. The pace of change is accelerating like we've never seen before. Uh, we see vast amounts of data being generated every second from diverse sources like IoT devices, social media, business transactions, uh, just a sheer number and volume of velocity of data presents both a challenge and an opportunity for businesses. So um, regarding data initiatives, what I wanted to do here was just highlight three topics that businesses most commonly want to discuss around data and generative AI initiatives. Uh, the first one in the left column there, um, they, they want to align um, data and AI initiatives to their strategic goals. Um, you know, the conversations I have is they say, hey, um, I want to be innovative and competitive advantage, right? And I want to use Gen AI and, and the data that I have to bring the best product to market. Um, I also have a ton of conversations with customers. They say, hey, um, how can we provide the best customer experience um, using AI chat agents, right? How do I, how do I automate that? Right. Uh, where do we start with all that? Um, I also have clients talking about, hey, um, they flat out say, how do I use Gen AI to reduce cost and grow my bottom line revenue? Right. Um, another category we, we see customers fall into, and it could be a combination of all three, is uh, we often have conversations with organizations that want to start leveraging Gen AI, but they're unsure how to address the challenges and pain points around adopting it. For example, uh, the conversations uh, usually go like, how do I get better quality out of the data I have, right? Because they know the better your data quality is, the more accurate your models will be. Um, some want to ensure, how do I uh, get the correct regulatory practices in place around their data in AI, right? Because regulatory fines are super expensive. And, um, you know, the regulatory bodies are always expanding on these requirements, right? So how do I keep up with that in an automated fashion? Uh, skills and expertise. This is probably like the most that we've seen, but, you know, I, I just don't have the skills for Gen AI. I don't have the skills for data. You know, how, how, how can you help us from that standpoint? And even, hey, I want to utilize Gen AI to help skill up new employees or new uh, customers, right? Um, and then thirdly, I think this is in every bucket. Um, we have customers saying um, very often they want to optimize and improve targeted business processes. For example, how do I ensure that my curated data is trusted? Like, how do I know that it's, it's, it is what it is, right? How can I use that for data outcomes? How do I easily and confidently build and share data products across my org, right? And frankly, uh, the biggest one is how do I just provide faster time to value with the data that I have already. You can see how complex a data journey could be. So I'll get into some of those solutions later, but um, you know, let's talk about, uh, let's get more into the problem statement, right? Again, like I mentioned, it's, it's hard to achieve good outcomes with uh, Gen AI, right? Uh, the enterprise generative AI data problem is a big concern. That concern refers to the challenge that businesses face in managing data effectively when integrating generative AI technologies into their operations. AI is only as good as your data. Some of those concerns are exacerbated when um, scaling out AI requirements for trusted data. When your data when your data grows, how do you scale out AI, and how do you ensure that trusted data? However, most organizations they'll struggle with fundamental data challenges from that standpoint. Um, data is dispersed across multiple locations and applications in cloud, leveraging 82% of organizations hindered by data silos. Like, the, like I, I heard this the other day, there's over 2,000 data vendors out there and companies don't just stick with one vendor or this vendor. Their, their, their data is spread across different silos, different sources, right? So how do we bring all those together, especially if your data keeps growing, right? And coupled with that, the formats and complexity are getting way more varied, right? Um, 
And then building on that is how do I ensure that the quality of those uh, documents, those image uh, files are where we need to be? Uh, a staggering 80% of the time is spent on data cleaning and preparations. Um, and, th and that's time that could be used to, to add value to your bottom line, your to something, your product itself, but that's just 80% of the time data cleaning and preparating, making sure your data is good. And then again, the doom and gloom, things are only gonna get worse. Meaning, um, uh, I was speaking with IDC the other day and they were like, stored data is expected to grow 250% by 2015 next year. That's 250%. And these growing volumes in the data across desperate silos not only pose challenges to, to data governance and compliance, but also drives up costs with associating, storing, managing data analytics and all that. Right? <clears throat> to sum it up, easy peasy. Uh, the more data, the more use cases, the more problems. And what I mean by that is, and I touched on some of this already, but more data, managing mass amounts of data gets super expensive really fast. Querying data is expensive, right? Uh, you have to bring CPUs in to make sure you query and, and you have to understand, you have to get smart and say, hey, which, which data do I query that makes the most sense or most impactful for my business? It gets super complicated uh, with growing data. With growing data, the impact of latency in real-time analytics gets um, very, very an issue, right? So imagine that you have streaming real-time analytics. As that data grows, how do you keep up with that latency and that lag for that SLA, right? Um, data quality. Um, this is one of the ones that I, I speak the most about, right? Um, ensuring that your data is correct, complete, with consistency, right? Uh, inaccuracies could lead to bad decision making for the business, right? Um, and one of the most important ones, right, is the more data you have, uh, the more you have to ensure there's automation in place with the governance and policies, right? How do you keep your security top of mind because you don't want any data misuse, right? Um, Problems around more use cases, right? Creating and maintaining bespoke data solutions for specific, specific uh, business needs will result in, in increased development times, ongoing maintenance, challenging. Uh, and then how do you make sure all of that is actually uh, compliant, right? So let's talk about some solutions, right? Problem solved. So, uh, when it comes to data intelligence, IBM provides organizations with tools for uh, effective data management. Um, we provide comprehensive solutions to prepare your data for AI at scale. We have capabilities in data discovery, cataloging, governance, lineage, and policy enforcement. And we do this in a fashion where it's all integrated so that you can have all these in one place and not to have to go everywhere. Um, our key focus areas of capabilities are data quality, uh, data governance, data lineage, and data product sharing, right? Um, our capabilities in data quality ensure that data is accurate, complete, and reliable. Uh, again, that's one of the things that most customers ask about. How do we do that in an automated fashion? We build tools around it. The most important one, like I mentioned earlier, is data governance. Establishing policies and procedures and standards for effective data management in an automatic fashion, right? Uh, we all we, we all know how governance is important, but it, it's super hard to implement, right? Data lineage, um, you know, this is a big one that we've been seeing a lot lately, but how do we provide a, a map of your data journey from origin to source? for reporting and import and impact analysis, right? Uh, we have capabilities around that. And, and, and that's, again, I'm seeing more of that every day. And then data product sharing, make data 
uh, readily available to the right people at the right time with the right access, right? So those are the, the, the four main themes um, that we have to address the data and diligence space. So let's just dive into the technology itself. So the first one we come to is uh, IBM Knowledge Catalog. Um, IBM Knowledge Catalog serves as the core of our data intelligence uh, strategy, ensuring that data remains protected, compliant, and easily discoverable while providing rich metadata for deeper insights. Um, plain and simple, IBM Knowledge Catalog provides governance for your data, and we make it easy with automation, right? IBM Knowledge Catalog provides the business with the ability to scale and accelerate the impact of AI with trusted data delivered on the right data, leveraging data governance, integration, and security. We've seen up to a 70% reduction in manual labor efforts uh, when, when folks actually implement a good governance and compliance tool around their operations. Uh, just touching on some key capabilities of um, IBM Knowledge Catalog. So uh, automated data privacy, right? How do, you, uh, how do you identify sensitive data like PII and enforce them across uh, access controls dynamically across your data landscape? Um, that is one of the staples that a lot of our customers say they love about IBM Knowledge Catalog. The ability to go in there and say, hey, I mark these as, I see these markers as uh, PII. If you see that within any one of my data landscape, mark it and put the policies in place that only certain people can access it dynamically, right? Um, improve data quality. We have a data quality uh, built to the core of IKC. Um, it addresses uh, quality issues with capabilities from data profiling, cleansing, monitoring, matching, and automation of data enrichment. We have, uh, we have ability for you to, thresh, to uh, set quality thresholds and say, hey, if a certain quality score gets below this that you've defined, we can automatically flag those, tell you, hey, your quality score is at this level. And most importantly, we can tell you why it's gotten to that level, right? And then uh, manage policy and rules through automation, create uh, policy rules and apply them automatically throughout your landscape. Again, uh, I talked about that 70% of reduction in manual labor efforts uh, with the right tooling in place with automation that can be alleviated, right? So that's um, our governance perspective. Um, continuing the, the data intelligence theme, lineage plays a crucial role in uh, data intelligence as it helps organizations understand the full life cycle of their data from its origin on how it's processed, transformed, and used within various systems. I mean, that's, that's just very powerful, right? Uh, you to be able to see how your data was processed, who touched it, who changed it, and where they went, right? Uh, again, this is the hot topic. I, I, I talk lineage almost every day now, it's, it's crazy. But some of the, some of the things that we uh, accomplish with it is trust and transparency, right? Allow users to trace back to their data source. If we see something wrong, like, hey, um, where did this data traverse and how did it get there, right? Data quality, uh, identify points of, of uh, degradation in the data quality along the data pipelines. So again, if you go downstream and you see your data quality has gone down, having that tool is in place to say, hey, I saw the change in data quality in the middle of my pipelines, let's go address that now, right? How much time that changes saves, right? Regulatory compliance is like GDPR and HIPAA require organizations to, sh to know where personal data is sourced and how it's used in the flow. Um, again, I, I kind of touched on this earlier. Uh, the regulatory bodies are adding new uh, guidelines almost every year. And uh, data flows is something that they're they're adding as well too. So being able to understand in an automated fashion uh, where my data went to, where did, where did it go to, who touched it uh, from a reporting perspective, think how much time that's safe. 
Um, impact analysis. Um, imagine being able to uh, uh, tweak uh, upstream values and understand, well, what what's the repercussions of doing that? Right, we have that ability with impact analysis with our data lineage technology. Right, we've seen some clients get about a ninety-five percent reduction in time spent debugging root cause analysis in their data pipelines when implementing uh, Manta data lineage correctly. So, so again, um, it's all about how do you be intelligent about your preparation of data. Um, and then, you know, I, I talk about this as well too, but what good is your data intelligence if you can't easily share that data products and outcomes, right? Like you've done all this work to create these data products, these data assets, these data products for AI, these data uh, assets for your business, whatever. You've done all this work. What good is it if you can't share it um, and allow the right people to utilize it for a great outcome, right? So we have uh, what we call the IBM Data Product Hub that makes sharing data products super simple, right? Um, it enables organization-wide sharing, discovery, and the uses of uh, data products. It breaks down silos by connecting to desperate sources, simplifying the onboarding of reusable data products, regardless of where that data resides. So that's just a fancy way of saying, hey, you know, uh, we've taken a different approach on how you see in the market. So for example, some vendors talk nicely within their own ecosystem, meaning if you have X source systems here and source systems there, and it's all the same vendor, yes, you'll be able to see it. Our approach is how do we stitch all those desperate vendors together? How do you have a Snowflake here, Databricks here, IBM uh, here, right? How, how do you stitch all that together and be able to share that across your data landscape? That's what we do with Data Product Hub. Um, just talking to some of the capabilities there is that um, we enable share and exchange ready to use data products, right? So it, it, So basically it enables faster data sharing by automating the delivery of data products to consumers. Uh, and we use methods such as APIs. Um, we use methods as, as natural language queries to say, hey, I'm looking for this data product. Can you help me find it? And depending on their use case, it'll come back and uh, uh, deliver that to the consumer looking for that data product. Um, we, uh, IBM uh, product hub, Data Product Hub also has a uh, capabilities to manage data products life cycle. What does that mean? Um, own the data product life cycle from onboarding to requirement. Um, that means revisions of a, of, a, of a data product, maintaining, updating that data product, just owning that low life cycle from soup to nuts, making sure that your company understands that uh, data products is a different mindset. How do I keep that up to date? How do I make sure that um, the right data is still there, right? So we have a... Um, a uh, product lifecycle management system in place. And I talked about um, how onboarding products from desperate sources, uh, this is, uh, when it relates to the data sharing, that's what, what mo most co customers talk about, right? Like, um, how do I simplify the onboarding and sharing of reusable data? No matter where the data is, um, it could be integration with IBM, third-party data lake houses and source systems. And then uh, lastly about Data Product Hub, and something unique to what we do is we um, give the, provide the ability for, uh, for producers, data producers, to put contracts in place around those data product, products. And what I mean by those contracts, those contracts say, hey, these data products are only going to be used for X, Y, Z uh, purposes, um, the SLAs around these data products. This was, this was updated uh, last month, we'll, uh, we'll keep it up to date, um, et cetera, et cetera. When customers hear about the SLAs and contracts that we have with our data products, they're like, wow, I love this contract. It gives, it gives us that peace of mind that we're still adhering to our company's governance and policies while we're just handing out these data products to the other folks in our business. 
as Data Product Hub. And then lastly, um, together, these tools uh, comprehensively address the data uh, intelligence needs. Uh, we do this on any environment, any integration, no matter where your data resides with our, with our hybrid cloud platform, right? All built on OpenShift. Uh, we have SaaS as well. So again, uh, we, we data intelligence can be anywhere, right? And we've built our platform to accommodate. All right, so what personas and who benefits from data intelligence and, and from what we've seen, right? So uh, the data steward personas, um, you know, this is the time, time is super valuable, right? Um, we've seen a decrease in time spent on validating data quality against defined specifications up to about 70%, 75%, right? We've also seen uh, data stewards increase their data discovery speeds up to 2x. I mean, uh, that's just right there in itself, uh, uh, impeccable results of what we're seeing from a data steward's uh, per, uh, persona. Um, we've, we've also addressed <clears throat> uh, benefits for data engineers, right? Again, uh, time, increased speed for insights, by, by delivering curated and highly quality, uh, highly quality, high quality data assets, right? Again, I talked about this earlier. Uh, a lot of companies have data. A lot of companies say, hey, I've got these nice data qualities. A lot of data engineers worked hard on that data, uh, on, these, um, on these data products. But how do you make sure that um, the high quality is in place, right? So data engineers uh, utilizing our governance capabilities with data qualities have seen a 2x speed in making sure that data quality maintains at where it needs to be. And then um, impact analysis, I, I talked about that as well too, right? Uh, we've seen an 80% time spent on, uh, on impact analysis and, um, and a savings from that standpoint, right? So again, um, you know, I, I, I go and I talk to customers uh, who have implemented our lineage solution and strategy, and we talk to data engineers, and they're like, oh, my God, you know, since I have a view, a full view of my data landscape and uh, flows and pipelines, um, the, the impact analysis and resolution has just been night and day for us, right? So that's super impactful. And then... Um, <clears throat> from data consumers, so folks that you give your data uh, to, right? Um, they can leverage a centralized place to find and access the right data. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to many um, insurance, banks, you name it across any industry where other parts of the business are trying to find and access the right data, data and they just can't, right? They know the company has the, they know the company has the data assets, but how do you find that in a timely fashion? So what we've done again is addressed uh, now customers can consumers can actually go to a centralized place, find that right data in the right format they need, and also find it with more accurate results um, as it relates to those those data products. All right. Moving on. Just bringing it all together with these IBM products from a data intelligence. Um, we throw, we, again, there's a, a lot of different paths that you can go to. And this is why I didn't particularly go super deep in one area. I wanted to understand and, and just see where the conversation drives us. But you guys all know the benefits of, um, of uh, uh, tackling the intelligence, right? So uh, for example, more efficient data curation, right? With data quality assurance, uh, with automation of governance, that helps the business, right? Um, more effective data engineering with impact analysis. I just talked about how important that is for folks, right? And then um, productive data sharing. Again, how do I uh, find in my curated assets in a streamlined fashion? So again, just bringing it all together, all the touch points I talked about at the, the top, but it's just in one area. And then uh, lastly, um, I always like to pull this up because we did pretty good in this area, is 
the buying guide for intelligence, right? So when customers are saying, hey, um, how do I actually be impactful for the data I have in my landscape? Um, who are the leaders and, and, and where do you guys sit, right? So again, it, it, I thought it would be very, um, it would behoove me to put this up just so you guys can see who are the leaders in this section and, and who's in the game. And um, <clears throat> you can actually go see how the competitors stack up. Um, learn more about IBM. Um, I know that uh, the folks here are gonna send this out. We have white papers. Um, we have uh, uh, intelligent buyer's guides. Um, we're always, always putting on AI readiness workshops. And these are very, very um, helpful because uh, most of them are free to our partners or free to our customers. Um, and it'll teach you, it'll go deeper on Gen AI and making sure that you're ready for that. Um, and then we have uh, our IBM free trial with our data fabric. And our data fabric is where, is it just a technical architecture that incorporates all these capabilities that I talked about today that actually link into the good outcomes for uh, your data and AI initiatives. So that's it for my presentation. Um, 30 minutes on the dot. Let me check the chat here and see if um, we have Thank any you. questions. Yeah, no, this is great. Thank you so much for this great presentation. And I love a good uh, uh, a free resource there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as I said, our community, a good free trial. Hey, uh, and if you have questions for Dale, feel free to put them in the Q&A panel and just answer the most commonly asked questions. Just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides, recording, and anything else um, requested throughout there. Um, Dale, maybe you want to throw up the slide with the links to the free trial and stuff. While we yeah, let me, well, they're, they're hot links, so I don't, mm, yeah. I don't, yeah, I should have okay. just linked them. So maybe in a if you send out some documentation or yeah, just yeah. tell me, I can make sure. Wait a minute. Yeah, chat, sure. So uh, diving in here, um, does IBM Suite extend to business and technical glossaries? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the glossary, the uh, IBM uh, Knowledge Catalog is our business glossary, right? And uh, a differential that we have is we use something called uh, automated uh, metadata enrichment where we actually scan your uh, business uh, definitions and then we define those, we categorize them for you automatically. We say, hey, this looks like this. Can you validate? So yes, if they answer that question, the short answer. Very nice. So I'm gonna give everyone here a moment to um, put in their questions, but Daryl, you know, you talked about the rabbit holes that you can go down. Like there's so many rabbit holes in, in this topic. Like we could spend hours on what's your favorite one? What's what's the one that's or, or, or more appropriately, what's the one that's most uh, applicable to your customers? Oh, so um, the the two that I see the most, honestly, is uh, data lineage and data sharing. Right. Um, everybody knows that they need data governance. And that's probably the hardest nut to crack and the most complex, right? Um, how do you get my policies in place? How do I make sure that uh, this data is blacked out in an automatic fashion when folks in their business are trying to use it? Uh, everybody needs that. And that's probably the most complex. But the most conversations that I have is around data lineage and sharing products. So as it comes to data lineage, Again, I, I talked to a lot of these um, earlier, but I'll have customers. I just had one yesterday that was on, um, they're on ZOS. They had a, a lot of COBOL. They had Oracle. They had, um, and then they had some some systems outside of ZOS on Snowflake. Um, they had DB2. And they wanted to stitch all that together to understand where their data is going. Like they have no clue where the data is flowing back and forth. These these uh, systems were put in place long ago. And then with uh, lineage, we actually give you a visual graph representation on where your data flows, who touches it. We utilize. I don't know if you guys heard of Neo4j, but they're one of the industry leading leaders in uh, graph technology. Um, once you've connected to these data sources, 
then you can see that graphical representation I just mentioned, right? And then um, a, a lot of that, uh, and, and they love that, but one of the most most points that they always talk about is now from a compliance perspective, every year we take hours and hours and hours to comb through our data, to show where these data were flowing, to show which systems are connected to what, just to meet these regulatory compliance. With this in place, it automatically generates these reports in the format that in the format that regulators are asking for. And it saves these guys so much time. They're like, oh, I, this is just amazing. And then thirdly, um, with lineage, I, I touched on this earlier, is uh, we are we're not vendor, uh, sorry, we're a vendor agnostic, right? We don't care if it's Snowflake, Informatica, whoever. We understand that companies want to stitch it all together, right? So they love how it, it, it stretches across the entire environment landscape versus just being one vendor, right? So just for an example, I'm not, I don't want to talk bad about anybody at competitor, but uh, Informatica is really good at looking at Informatica lineage, right? Again, IBM lineage will look at, will incorporate Informatica lineage. It'll look at other vendors lineage and stitch all that together so you have that total landscape. So that's the power in why customers are actually leaning towards us from a data lineage perspective. And that's why I have so many conversations around that. Um, I can touch on uh, data sharing too, if you like, Shannon. Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. so. Um, this one is another one that um, I spend most of my time with, right? The reason is, is that a lot of customers and clients are building homegrown technologies just to have access to the data that they've uh, created. So again, all of these data engineers, all of these folks around your organization are creating all of these data assets for their everyday uses, right? Whether you're, um, you have customer sediment, you have uh, what have you, they're, they're, they're collecting all this data and creating all these assets around the organization. And the companies are like, well, I have somebody in my marketing department that wants to understand the market, uh, the customer sediments around this or, or whatever. How do I share these data products that I've created in a very streamlined, simple approach? Like, how do I do that? How do I even have the consumers of this data ask that question very simply and articulate those points? And when I give them the data product, how do they keep it in a compliant format, right? So for example, um, I'm talking to a bank and there's a whole bunch of, uh, there's a whole bunch of inquiries about different customer types so every time an employee needs to, uh, a non-technical employee wants to understand um, one of their customers, they always have to request the information to their data engineers. And their data engineers are inundated with these requests. Why do you need these requests? Okay, these queries are very complex, et cetera, et cetera. So what we've done is we put data product up in place. Now the consumer can say, hey, I want to request this type of data. The data engineer can say, okay, I see this request. Data Hub actually creates a template of that request. Um, so it does that with AI. And then now the person that's actually creating that request or, or fulfilling that request just uh, fine tunes the, um, the areas that need to be adjusted, creates a data product out of that and then hands that back to the customer, that uh, person that asked for it. And all of this is done through, the communication is done uh, with automation back and forth. And now the customer, uh, now the customer who is the non-business technical user can just ask questions to that data product and it will send queries to uh, the, the backend database, all that stuff automatically through that data product. And now the engineer doesn't even need to be involved unless um, there needs to be a tweak to that data product, what have you, right? So. Again, we're looking at innovative ways to save time from the engineers into the consumers of the data. And there's so many use cases, it's crazy, but that's the one where customers are like, wow, we're, we're trying to do a lot of these homegrown. You have this, uh, I would love to adopt it. And oh, by the way, 
it would be cool if you had this feature. So we work with them to say, okay, this, this is repeatable to other clients. Let's, uh, let's adopt it, right? That makes sense to you. It does indeed. We have a couple of questions coming in here, Daryl. Um, how yeah. does IBM's lineage handle UDFs, user-defined functions? I found that aspect is the single most common quote unquote roadblock for effective seamless lineage. I love that question. And that question comes up every single time. Um, so that is probably the hardest lineage to obtain, right? Because there's custom code, et cetera, et cetera. So what we do is, uh, and, and this is our answer, we actually, depending on how, how custom that code is, we have services in place that will come in and work with our clients to create a custom solution to scan in and read that code so that they can get lineage out of that, right? So it's not, so so we have a whole bunch of uh, scanners that come out of the box. And what I mean scanners, scanners that are for Oracle, for DB2, for SQL. But again, a lot of users have their own <laughs> code that they define, right? So we have practices in place. We have services that actually go deep. In Manta, we also have a designer where you can actually create your own uh, using open lineage and then plug that into our uh, main uh, uh, Manta landscape as well. So that that is tricky. If it was super easy, we'll you know you you would have heard of us a thousand times over. But it is more work. We have to work with closely with the customers to understand what they're actually trying to accomplish. But IBM being so big, we have the services arm to help uh, get that customization down and plug it into your lineage landscape. Right. Good question. It always comes up. Indeed. And you keep mentioning Manta and uh, Manta is a company that uh, and a product that IBM acquired uh, recently, fairly recently, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, apologies. You When you live and breathe this every day, you just say these terminologies without even thinking about it. But yeah, absolutely. So Manta was actually the leading uh, uh, vendor when it comes to data lineage on the market when we before we bought them. I want to say a year and a half ago now. Now we've incorporated them in the IBM. They uh, and the goal of that is to continue for uh, lineage dominance is what I tell my folks in here, um, and uh, expand on it. And with our customer reach, we see a lot of different workloads. Again, I talked about legacy workloads from Z to P. We talk about we see so many different type of workloads. Now we're building out our capabilities to address that from an enterprise perspective. We've even um, we've even redone uh, the core code of Manta to make it more um, enterprise ready from uh, scalability, uh, SLAs, all that, right? But yeah, Manta is a company that we've purchased. It's data lineage, and it's um, and we do we refer to it as Manta data lineage, but uh, it is just lineage at the core, right? Yeah, thank you. So. Um Daryl, I'm seeing a term data and information observability. Could you explain uh, a little bit? Yeah, so um, we, yes, I love it. So we actually have a product called DataBand. And DataBand is a product that actually monitors your pipelines in real time. And that monitor is called observability. And it monitors, it observes your data pipelines. And again, if you make any tweaks or if you say, hey, this file, if this file is bad here, how does it affect, affect your down pipe, um, downstream uh, pipelines, right? So we use DataBand coupled with Manta Lineage to get that real-time data observability or that real-time data monitoring. So we have customers right now implementing that and uh, again the power the power of that real time to see if i uh, how i affect this object how is it going to affect my pipelines is customers love it right so that's what it's referred to as data observability from our standpoint makes sense shannon thanks a lot of sense thank you cool. so um uh question uh, about a totally different 
product, <laughs> IBM product. What about, uh, and so you may or may not know the answer. What about cloud pack for data? Is that uh, I was just laughing because I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, I'm trying to answer this in a way that won't get me in trouble for now. So uh, we're always improving on cloud pack for data. Um, <clears throat> um, our data fabric architecture is built on Cloud Pack for Data. It's um, and for those who don't know, Cloud Pack for Data runs on OpenShift, and OpenShift is just a, a container manager, and then uh, Cloud Pack for Data is is OpenShift's container manager, right? So it integrates everything into uh, um, a console a con console. Basically, and that's cloud pack for data, right? So just think of it as a as a um, container manager system that runs that uh, controls OpenShift, right? Now, with that being said, we are doing a lot of uh, enhancements to cloud pack for data. Uh, we're making it lighter weight. We're eliminating a lot of the requirements that we previously had. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing customers want it in a lot of different areas. We're doing some extensions where it actually can control other types of container uh, uh, technologies out there. Um, but everything we have is built in Cloud Pack for Data. The technology that I talked about today is a combination of both SaaS on cloud and on Cloud Pack for Data, right? On OpenShift. But yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're doing some enhancements to a Cloud Pack for Data. All right, I'm reading the next question. How does IBM Fabric could be used in any of the other than vendors? Maybe vendor with the comments. Um, so the question I'm reading is how does IBM Data Fabric could be used in any data lake provider by other vendors? If it is, what benefits would that come out? Okay, so um so IBM has our modern data lake called WatsonX.data. Um, and, and we use uh, Spark and Presto engines to actually uh, ingest and in, in, uh, to work on that data. And cloud and um, our data lake is the one that actually has the connections into data fabric and other types of lake houses as well. So think of that as that unified uh, dot data as that unified uh, lake house to 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 connect the, the, the desperate sources with the analytical engines on those, right? I think, I'm, I, think I answered your question there. All right. I believe so, yeah. And I think that's all the questions that we have that have come in. Okay, cool. Daryl, this has been so fabulous. Thank you so much. A great presentation, a very, a very clean and seamless. Um, and thanks to all our attendees who have engaged and been and joined us. Just again, a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. And I hope you all have a very happy Halloween. And thanks to IBM for sponsoring. Daryl, thanks so much. Thank you. Talk to you later. Cheers. Cheers.